All right, hello and welcome. My name is Risk, and this is a new video in a new video series. Um, the video series is called CS Insight. If you do not know me, my name, of course, is Risk, and I used to cast or commentate Counter Strike Global Offensive in the early days of it, and I've been doing a couple of videos uh, on my own channel. But now I'm here on the Netcode Guides YouTube channel. Of course, uh, this series is sponsored by netcodeguides.com, a trading service for CSGO. If you want to get better at CSGO, you can learn a lot of good stuff over there. Of course, it's by um, some of the top professional players uh, in the game. So do head over to netcodeguides.com. There's a link in the description. And you can also check some of the free videos out here on this YouTube channel. But uh, let's get into it. Uh, this is a, a video series called CS Insight, which uh, is going to be a series where I'm going to try and give you some insight, try and give you some knowledge of some of the stuff you did not know about the Counter-Strike players in the scene, about the teams, about current stuff that's going on. Um, so yeah, the first video is going to be one that I've picked a, a topic on, but you can leave a comment in the in the comment section below with uh, ideas of what I should uh, do a video on next, if there's something you want to know, if there's a team history you want to me to be revisit or something, uh, or something that's that's just happened that you want to know like some more information on so I'll, I'll let you guys do that but let's start off this video is called the rise of fanatic in CSGO and uh, yeah to give you kind of uh, a view of why this who this team is the team that just won uh, the the major and a, and a team that's currently a powerhouse and pretty much beating everyone um, but yeah an instruction about fanatic fanatic is an esport gaming organization started in 2004 by a guy named Sam Matthews and Pretty much known for their legendary Players like from the beginning of esports pretty much um, I know them from from 1.6 Which was the game that I followed back then uh, along with the CS source which I played where they also had a team But at 1.6 they had some legendary teams with like, I'm just going to list some names here, and if you know 1.6 and also CSGO, some will, some of them will, will ring a bell. Get Right played for Fnatic, DSN played for Fnatic, Delpan played for Fnatic, Forest, Temple, Archie, even even Karn, who is a CS 1.6 and CSGO legend, who today works as a chief gaming officer at Fnatic, played for Fnatic in some legendary lineups. They also had two source lineups. Um, some of you may not be familiar with this, but they actually had a lineup from uh, from the Netherlands, uh, featuring uh, some of, some of the best source players. They actually dominated the source scene for almost a year at a point. Uh, prof, the young gun, the prophet, uh, the, the the young guy who was so young when CGS came around, he couldn't actually enter because he was too young to enter. And then Sertian, who made it uh, into the CGS. Um, you can go and look up the CGS if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you don't know already. Um, also along with Blaze who also made it in there so legendary team and then a Danish team who won basically like a talent competition uh, Fnatic hosted like a competition okay we're gonna have all the source teams in here and the team that wins this tournament is gonna get like backing from us they're gonna get laptops and they can go to every LAN and we're gonna sponsor them it's gonna be great and then a Danish team came in and, and won that competition with some pretty like I'm not going to say dodgy, but a lot of people thought it was dodgy. All the Danish players knew who these guys were, and they played well at LAN also, uh, like, around that time. So, yeah, but that team had players like VH, Herden, and Ruga. Um, you probably only know Ruga because he was in, in some of the, the early Danish CSGO lineups uh, with alongside MSL and those guys. Uh, okay, that's the, the history of, of Fnatics, so and now let's move on to the switch to CSGO, because they had a lot of legendary 1.6 teams, and the world... A bunch of legendary titles, and I think guys like Thorin or someone else with a lot of CS 1.6 knowledge would be more informed of telling this. But this is not really what I'm. I'm. This video is about. This video is about Fnatic and CS:GO. So they started up uh, having having a lineup that was kind of their lineup from 1.6 from the season uh, before that, which was uh, Freeze, Trace, and then Marty and Kerrigan, who were the 1.6 players. Uh, they lost Exist to uh, to NIP, to form NIP back then, so they had him on the team as well. But then they also picked a Danish player up called Rudder, uh, which makes sense because you have Fries and Trace, who are also Danish players, and Carrigan as well, and Modi speaks Danish, so it's pretty much a Danish team anyway. Um, and they went to uh, one of the first tournaments uh, ever in CSGO called DreamHack Winner. Well, not ever, but um, there was a couple of them before that. But they went to DreamHack Winner 2012, where they lost out to uh, Mouseboard's a uh, UK squad um, under the leadership of Rattlesnake. Uh, they lost there in the group stages. 
And then they kind of switched around and then uh, made a lineup of Fries and Trace, still the core uh, from that 1.6 lineup, still Ritter on that team, and then picked up a guy called Jokem, who was at that time, uh, in my opinion, uh, at the end of CSS, Starter Source, one of the best Danish AWP players, and also Sipnix, who you know from uh, TSM. So uh, Sipnix has just performed really well at a tournament in Germany called Northcon with his team C-Play, so he got picked up by Fnatic just after that. So they had that lineup, played around with it for a while, then replaced Ritten and Jokem with Marty and Stinger. Marty, of course, the, the Swedish guy I talked about before, who also speaks Danish uh, pretty well, I'm told. Uh, and then Stinger from Norway, um, also um, a big source player, uh, big, big talent, uh, who came in to play for Fnatic. So they played with this team for a while again, and this is a time where CSGO did not have many competition. I have to stress you that. Um, I actually I actually casted most of the competitions back then, and there was literally not much going on. And when there was something going on, it was like five thousand dollars for first prize. That was insane. Or five five thousand dollars for the entire tournament, and we had like five K viewers or something. So this is a time where CS:GO was kind of not as big as it is today. But they play and they play at all the local Danish lands. They actually go to one called the Blast, um, a land that is shut down in Denmark, I think, right now. Um, but they lose out uh, in the tournament. And I'm pretty sure they probably had some guys uh, from Fnatic saying, okay, guys, you got you got to start winning now. This is Fnatic. We have a legacy in CS. We want to be the number one team, if not in the world, then at least in Denmark. And they lose out to Copenhagen Wolves, who at that time, I think, uh, had device in the lineup as well. So a pretty tough opponent, but still they lose out. And then they try to shuffle back in with the lineup, trying to play with Kerrigan as in-game leader again. But eventually in July, I think, uh, was that 2012 or 13? Um, I just remember July because the blast was in May. Never mind. Um, then they released the squad. And this is where the story actually begins. So <laughs> all these first seven minutes have just been an intro to the start of the Swedes. This is where Fnatic becomes Fnatic because they pick up a young Swedish team called Epsilon. Um, if you actually go through uh, onto my old YouTube channel, there's a video on Devil Walk and I kind of go through the history of Epsilon and so forth. You, I'll leave a link for that in, in, the, in the description below. But yeah, they sign up Epsilon because Epsilon just played at DreamHack Summer 2013, where they actually went into the grand final to play against Nip. So it was the Swedish versus Swedish final. Uh, they lost out. Um, actually, Devil Walk was quoted for saying, "We don't, we don't actually care anymore. We just want to play in this grand final and enjoy it." Because they were huge underdogs, actually huge underdogs to even get to the final. But they get there, they get signed, and that lineup is JW, Flusher, Devil Walk, Snyder, and Modi. Modi actually transferred over to Epsilon like at the ending of Fnatic, which is kind of ironic because he then eventually ends up on Fnatic again when they pick up Epsilon. Um, this lineup, of course, as, as you know, uh, you, you can see there is JW and Flosha uh, right there from the beginning as they get picked up. They're still playing in this lineup today. We're talking a team from 2013. June 2013, that's when they become Fnatic. JW and Flosha has been a Fnatic for all that time. This is before most CSGO fans today started tuning in. So that's actually pretty incredible that they stopped so far. Um, Devil Walk, of course, not in the team anymore, but also was there a long time. But yeah, they pick that lineup up and they play around with it. Um, of course, being signed by Fnatic means there's a, some more pressure um, because, as I said before, Fnatic has a legacy of being a number one team in pretty much every eSport they compete in and the legacy is in CS. So there's a lot of pressure. And they go to uh, one of the first, actually, dream hacks uh, outside of Sweden that actually had CSGO, which was DreamHack Bucharest in 2013. Uh, sometime in the summer, I think August, I can't really remember. They go up there, and um, I think it's in the group stage, or in the like, end of the group stage, the start of the playoffs. A really important match. Uh, they get matched up against NIP, um, the Swedish rivals, which they played against as Epsilon at the former DreamHack final. And there's a lot of confusion going on because um, I can't really reiterate, reiterate the whole thing because it's actually very confusing, but there was some bad blood. Uh, some stuff was said. There was an overtime. Uh, Fnatic eventually won out the game after some passes and some loss of momentum and some overtimes, rules that didn't work out. And then after the game was done, 
uh, get right in the nip players, come over to the fanatic players to shake hands. And all the fanatic players are just like, no, 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 mate. No, no, we don't want to shake your hand. Uh, <laughs> and also, you, you can kind of, if you know Swedish, you'll get someone Swedish to translate. There's a video, I'll put that in the description as well, where, where you can actually see them, the winning moment, I think captured by HLTV.org. And they're just, they're yelling really like hard shit towards uh, the NIP players. You can see JW just going off completely. Um, but yeah, that's the beginning of, of, of the rivalry that technically already existed, but this is more drama. There's way more drama now. Um, sadly for Fnatic, they lose out in this tournament. They do not win it. I think they lose out to Lemon Dogs, another Swedish team uh, featuring Twist uh, and some other guys. I can't really remember, but Le Lemon Dogs also a legendary team uh, back in those days where CS wasn't as big. But yeah, uh, they then found out, okay, we got to fix something in this lineup. This is not working. We can't really reach the same results. Streamhack Bucharest was a testament to that. And they removed Madi. Um, who also, some say, uh, is is a key to to some of the anger and, and some of the bad blood. Uh, he has been shuffling around a lot of teams, and I I don't know him personally, so I don't I can't confirm if if he's just a rager in every game. But some people say that, so do with that information as you will. Um, they remove him and they pick up Pronax um, as in game leader, uh, just just a month before the first major in CS:GO. So this is like. The team that won the last big tournament picks up a new in-game leader a month before the first major, the first $100,000 tournament. This is huge, huge stuff. Uh, as you know, if you follow CS, they actually do one tournament before. Um, they've been playing uh, uh, in a league called uh, the Fnatic Frag Out League. And in that league, you qualify to play... Actually, I think it was called the MSI Beat It League. I don't know, remember. But they go to the MSI Beat It which had some finals in China, and they actually finish up second. So not a bad showing, but not the showing that they kind of wanted. They wanted to be number one, and that's why they picked up Pronax. But then Pronax did not have time to really set them into the strats. So after the, after the uh, MSI beat it, they just prac and prac and prac and prac practice all time, all day with Pronax, trying to learn the new strats, trying to go over everything. But of course, like two weeks is not enough time for a top caliber team to get a new in-game leader and go a whole set of new strats. But they go into DreamHack winner and draw a killer group. Um, basically four teams and four teams who could all go out as number one in that group at that point. Um, of course, it's Fnatic in the group. And then LGB, uh, who some of you may know because that was the team Crimson Olaf Meister was actually in before and also a, a Swedish team that had the kind of capacity of surprising everyone at doesn't matter what tournament they played against. Usually they did not win. They ended up like uh, eight to seventh or third to fourth or something like that. They never really won anything, but they were incredibly good. And when they played their best, they were just insane. So LGB and then Clan Mystic, who eventually went on to win uh, one big tournament, which was ESWC, kind of a fluke, some say. But still, they had some players in that lineup who then later on became a part of, of, of the French top scene uh, in Envious. Uh, and, and stuff like that. And then last but not least, Navi, the 1.6 Legends, turned CSGO Legends, as you all know. Uh, pretty much the same lineup as they have today. I think they had Starix instead of... Mm, they might also have had Markalov back then. But also a legendary lineup, pretty pretty, pretty strong team. Um, they actually make, make it out first in that group, uh, beating these teams, so kudos to them. Then they go up in the quarters against the other strong... Uh, actually, there were three strong French team, three teams at that moment. Clan Mystic, Team Very Games, and then uh, Recursive, who they met up against in the quarters. And Recursive had Maniac, Happy, and Ken Yes. Imagine that team. And then two other players who were just below that level called GMX and Uzi. Um, they win over, over the French team Recursive in the in the quarterfinals 2-1. And then they go on to the semifinals where they beat the American team. I think actually that's that's the best result an American team has ever gotten at a major uh, going to, to the semis. <laughs> Complexity, they beat them 2-0 to zero, and then go to the final against NIP. Played in the same arena as they played against last time they were there in the DreamHack Dream Arena when they were Epsilon and played against Nip at DreamHack Summer just before they got picked up by Fnatic. And they win that final and everyone is happy for them. NIP of course are crushed. But Khan is just uh, jumping out of his seat. Everyone is just going crazy. Uh, Devil Walk said in an interview that he would drop his pants live on stage. 
if uh, they won the final, they won the final. He dropped his pants in front of everybody. It was glorious, glorious scene. Huge shout out to Devil Walk, cool guy. And yeah, they are the first major champions of CSGO. This is the one, the first monumental thing that happens for Fnatic. Winning that uh, DreamHack winner 2013 major. Uh, the first big thing they do with that lineup. And a lot of that credit was given to Pronax. Because he took Fnatic, who was at that point before him, a team that, very aggressive, also took peaks and did stuff they probably shouldn't. And they needed a guy to calm them down, run some set strat, run some defaults, do some mid-round calling, and just keep them in order. Because if you have, if you can imagine players like JW, who likes to peak a lot, imagine him two years ago, being even younger, and just not caring. He's just going to peak everything, and just run around and shoot people just going crazy. They needed someone to kind of lock them down and get control over everything. That's what Pronax did, and that's why they won that major. Also because people didn't really expect them to do that well. They expected them to end up like in a quarterfinal or semifinal, but not to win it at all. But Pronax then just, um, sorry for that. Pronax just went on to just lead them there. So basically that's the win at DreamHack Winner. And then after that follows a period where they just can't seem to find the same groove. Um, they're like, not bad, but they're just not at the same level as they were in that major, uh, where they were beating the best teams in the world left, right, and center. Um, and that actually shows at the playoffs at the next uh, major tournament. Um, they had an online period between DreamHack Winner 2013, which was sometime in November. And then Emus won Katowice, which was in the early spring of 2014. They had a huge online period, including, of course, the, the holidays when no one plays, really, um, where they did not play very well online in all the online tournaments because back then there was not a LAN every weekend. There was a tournament and then two months of online and then a tournament. Um, but yeah, they played not up to, up, up to standards in the online period. And then they go to the playoffs at, at EMS won Katowice. Um, actually just narrowly escaped through the groups because they lost to the Danish team, uh, Reason, who had Carrigan and Freeze in that team, both old Fnatic players. They lost to them in the first game, 16 to 13, but then they go back and play Reason in the elimination game to get out of groups, and they pick the map, uh, Fnatic picked the map that they lost against Reason uh, in the first one, which was Inferno, and then just absolutely crushed them in the elimination game in 16 to 3. Um, or 16 or 5 or something. I don't really remember. It was a big victory. Um, and uh, yeah, then they they get to the playoffs and they're drawn up against uh, not their number one Swedish rivals from NIP, but their number two Swedish rivals from LGB. Uh, of course, with Crimson and all of them. And they get beaten. Uh, LGB simply takes them out. You, you all know this if you, if you follow the major. Um, Fnatic just disheartened completely. Um... They were supposed to be the number two team in Sweden because back then Nip were number one. Uh, they won the major, so everyone was like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe they can take over Nip's spot now um, because they won the major. They're probably better. And then they lose out in this major to the number, supposedly three team in Sweden at that point. And everyone's just disheartened and disappointed. And then it's do or die for them. There's a couple of months before the next big CS tournament, and that's DreamHack Summer. Um, a couple of months where they don't perform that well either. Uh, they perform okay. It's kind of like... I can't really find a, a good metaphor for this, but it's kind of like they, they they don't lose every game. They play against some of the best teams in the world online. They lose some, they win some, but you would expect a team of that caliber to win every game, like Fnatic have done in this major we just saw, like beating everyone, losing four, four rounds in the group stage, for example. That's what you expect. Um, and then they go to DreamHack Summer 2014. That one was not a major, but still a tournament that had like eight out of the top 10 teams in the world. And it's do or die for the lineup. It's do or die for the lineup um, with, uh, of course, the lineup you know today and then Devil Walk. Uh, actually, excuse me, that's not the lineup. <laughs> JW, Flosher, Devil Walk, Snyder, and Pronax. So Snyder and Devil Walk and then the lineup you know today. And they go to the groups. And they play another Swedish team, which seems to be their kryptonite so far. Uh, but not LGB, not NIP. They play 
a team called SK, and today SK is a Danish team, but back then, SK was just a Swedish, not mix, but closer to mix than a regular team, uh, picked up by SK for the tournament, uh, featuring Michael Ailey, who you know plays for King Gwyn today, and they lost to them twice in groups. First off, 69, and, and the last one I don't remember, but that was just demolishing. Fanatic destroyed. Uh, I, I remember I remember them just looking at the stream, Michael Ailey and the guys, of course, jumping and screaming, and Fanatic are just crushed, completely crushed. And that's the time where they find out, okay, we got to change something. We got to do something with, with this lineup. Obviously, we have some talent here. Um, we won the first major. We have to do something different, have to pick up some new players, have to shuffle something around. They did win the Swedish championship over NIP uh, a day later, but that was a small consolation prize after being eliminated in the group stages at DreamHack. So now, they have to do something with the lineup. So they're thinking, okay, NIP locked down. They got some of the one of the best orcs in CSGO, some of the best paychecks. We can't get those players at any point. So we have SK who later on after the tournament actually pretty much bombed out and got removed from the SK organization. Um, and then you have LGB. Those are kind of your, your options, the SK team or the LGB team, because that's 10 players and you don't have like more than 10 players to choose from. You probably would have maybe today a couple of players you could pick up from the, from like the lower parts of the scene, but back then that was just not an opportunity. So it's either pick up two players or one player at the time um, from, from SK or from LGB. And they decide to pick up all of M and Crims from LGB, which is, in my opinion, back then, and also, as you can see today, a genius choice. They were the two top fraggers, the two top performers on LGB, uh, the team that was kind of like, they could surprise any team, any top team in the world on a good day. They picked them up and they kicked Snyder. Um, in my opinion, a really nice guy, but kind of underperforming in the months where the whole fanatic team were underperforming. Like he was at the bottom of the scoreboard almost every time. Um, and then there's kind of like one one guy like remaining. Okay, what do we have to do? We have JW, Flusher, and Pronax. We can't kick Pronax. Pronax is the in-game in leader. We can't kick him. He was the reason why we won the major. J JW, biggest talent in Sweden, uh, one of the best opus in Sweden. Flusher was just a solid all-around player as he is today. Um, so the obvious choice is Devil Walk. We gotta let Devil Walk go. Um, but the way they do it is that they don't actually let him go. They move him to a coach position. And this is something that's particularly genius in my in my mind because I think that's a very important thing for esports teams to have that coach. You have the in-game leader to call, but also the, co the coach to help the team out. Um, so they do that and they pick up all of them and Crims. So now it's, of course, the lineup here today of all of them and Crims, Flush it, JW and Pronax, but Devil Walk in the coach position. And that kind of sets the stone for the team you know today. Um, the team that has come on to, to be triple major champions. But also a team that has adjusted to a certain way of playing because they have the five-man lineup, they have Pronax calling, and they have the coach. It's not Devil Walk anymore. They have picked up a guy called Vugo, who's also really talented at what he does. And it's, it's kind of the same structure. And that structure is what I think is the perfect structure for a CSGO team. Um... And yeah, the, the the recent victory at the recent major is just a testament to that. So uh, yeah, that's a, a short little uh, introduction or history lesson on the rise of Fnatic in CSGO. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name's Risk, and of course this has been uh, an episode of CS Insight on the Netcode Guides YouTube channel. Remember to go over to netcodeguides.com to learn more about CS and get better uh, at Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I'll see you in the next video.